How's it going? Seth here. So I wanted to make this quick video just to show you if you've ever wondered, how do I create a QR code? Regardless of what the purpose is for, if you just want to create that code, you're not sure where or how to do it. My favorite way to do it, it's with this website called QR Code Monkey. And this is the one I've used for years. And there's plenty of other places you can do this. Something I've found is an issue with some of the other websites out there. If you just go to a random one is that once you create this QR code, they can kind of hold you hostage and say, oh, this QR code is not going to work anymore until you start paying us for it. And that really bugs me a lot. <laughs> when I create a QR code, I need to know it's going to work forever and nothing's ever going to stop that. And according to this website, if you look down here in the frequently asked questions, if you're ever wondering, do the QR codes ever expire? They say they do not expire and will work forever. QR codes created with QR code monkey are static and do not stop working after a certain time. You just can't edit the content of the QR codes again. So right there. That's pretty much all I need to know. Another really cool thing about QR code monkey is that you can use it to create a QR code for all kinds of different purposes, whether you just want to send them to a website. That's usually what I'm doing. But again, if you were using this for texting, you can have this generate a pre-written text or you can have it send an email to somebody or call a phone number. You could have it give someone directions just by giving that person your location once they scan it, all kinds of different stuff. And it goes far beyond this. But I'm just going to show you how you can do this for probably the most common use which is just sending a person to a website. This is what I've done in many cases when I want to send somebody to my buying website or my selling a website or to a specific form or to a video I've created or even to a social media profile. There are like infinite uses just based on this one alone with the website URL. So just super generic. Let's say I'm going to put my website URL in here, have it go to retipshare.com and you'll see this toggle switch. And if you want to do this, then it starts costing money. Personally, I've never done this, but if you ever wanted to like see the statistics of how many people are scanning the thing and all that, that's when you'd have to pay. But I don't really need that for my purposes. Down here, you can set the color. This is something I think is really cool because you can set it to any color you want or color gradient if you want like two colors in there, which is what you currently see here where it's kind of like black at the bottom and blue at the top. And, uh, down here, you can also add your logo to this thing. You can either use one of these pre-generated logos or you can take your own logo and upload it. I'll just do that really quick to show you what I mean. So I'll go and upload the RE Tips Your Logo here and then we'll check this box to remove the background of the QR code behind the logo so that you can actually see it. If you don't use this, then like this code stuff will be over the logo and it'll kind of like defeat the whole purpose. I frankly feel like that should be checked by default, but anyway. And then down here for customized design, actually first I'm going to go ahead and just create the, the QR code as it is without customizing anything and you can kind of see what it looks like. So click this create code thing and there we go. You can see the QR code with my uh, logo right there. If you want to go ahead and pause this video right now and take out your phone, open up the camera app and scan it, you can see how this works. This goes right to the URL that I put in here. If you want to make this look even cooler, if you want, you don't really have to, but if you wanted to, you can select all these different ways for the QR code to look in terms of like, instead of having these squares there, you could have it be like circles or lines or diamond shapes or whatever you want to do. So, you know, I'll just play around with this a little bit. Select that, select this, and let's see how this looks. There you go. So kind of looks funky, kind of cool, a little bit different than what you'd normally see. And again, this will work just like it did before, where it will send people to the exact same URL I entered in there. There are plenty of other ways you can do this. There's other websites out there. Some of them are probably fine. I think Google even has its own way to create QR codes like this. But when you do it that way, they just look like the ugly old boring way without a logo, without colors. It's just black. There's none of this cool stuff going on. And since this thing is free and the QR codes last forever, I use it all the time. And uh, once you have this all set, you just download the PNG file. It'll give you this little ad as it's generating the code. And once you have that file, you can then uh, upload it to your direct mail piece or a video or whatever it is you're trying to do. It works perfect. And just one other thought I'll share with you here. So I know one of the advantages of having this kind of QR code is that it works forever. But one of the potential drawbacks is what if you put this QR code out into the world somewhere and the destination of where you're trying to send people changes? Like, say I make a postcard and I send this out and people hang on to that postcard for years. And then let's take an extreme case and say somebody pulls out my postcard five years later and tries to scan that thing. But my website URL has changed since I originally made that. How do I make sure this QR code continues sending them to the right place in the future as well? I think if you were to pay for this service, I've never actually done that, but I think that would give you the option to do that. So that may be one thing to consider. But another thing you could do, this is what I personally 
normally do is I have a WordPress website and I use Pretty Links, which is a WordPress plugin that allows you to create really easy to remember URLs. Like for example, retipster.com forward slash QR codes. And if you click on that, it will send you to this blog post. But what if I like change the URL of this blog post or just for some reason, if I want to send people to a different place, if they were to scan that, well, I can go into the WordPress plugin in my website and change where retipster.com forward slash QR codes points to. So not only is it really easy to remember and type out, but you can change the destination of where that sends people. Another way to do this, if you didn't have your own WordPress website, is to use something like Bitly, which I've actually haven't used that much, but I know a lot of people who do, and I think this basically does that exact same kind of thing. Or if you did own a website domain, like I own several of them through something like Namecheap, Namecheap allows you to use that single domain name and redirect where you want it to point people. So for example, if I owned QR codes for you.com or whatever that might be, I could change where I want that to point people when people click on that. So if I put that URL behind the QR code right here, that URL wouldn't need to change because I can change where that URL points people to, whether it's to one of my websites or a YouTube video or a social media profile or whatever. That's another thing you could consider if you're at all concerned about, well, you know, I want to use this QR code for years in the future, but I don't know if the destination is always going to remain the same. You could just plan ahead by setting it up in such a way that you can very easily redirect it whenever you want to. Just don't forget whichever method you use. So you can log into that platform, whatever that is, and update where you want that QR code to point. So again, QR code monkey, that's the one that I use. You don't have to use this one, but if you're looking for a really easy, versatile way to do this, this is the place I always go. The use cases go on and on and on. And if you want to see some more ideas on how to do that, I'll have a link beneath this video to a blog post and another video where I talk about some of those other use cases and how I find them useful. As you just saw, it's very easy to do. It's free to do. And this is where I go to do it.